What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have one of our newest junior moderators, uh, Christopher. And so thank you for coming on, my man. We're glad to have you. I appreciate it. Of course, man. So I guess as usual, we kind of want to start with, you know, how did you get into trading? And then how did you find MIC? So kind of give us like the whole beginning picture of your career. So I started in like 2017 and I saw on YouTube, like a lot of people, the Tim Sykes videos. Yep. And at that time I was actually in college again. So I've been in the military and I got out and went back to college and was grinding that out, you know, which is fine, you know, because I just always wanted to go back. And I, I yeah. just saw the videos about trading. And I was like, man, it's pretty cool, you know. And I was going to school for, you know, business management and finance. Yep. And it just kind of like, you know, caught my interest. And I started looking into it more. And, you know, I had a little bit of money and I opened a little small account. I was like, hey, I'm going to try this. I know crap about it, just like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, <laughs> tried it and you know just to learn off of youtube and what i could find and you know like everybody buying the tops man losing you know and, and <laughs> gotta be some but but i also kept it in perspective i was like well i'll mind losing a little bit of money to learn it, yeah, it is what yeah. It is. But, so it was just small you know i, I mean i start with like 10 shares whatever and just trying yeah. it you know? and then as time went along i researched it more and I don't remember how I came across MIC. I think it was on Twitter, actually, because I started seeing, you know, traders on Twitter. Yeah. You know, I saw Harry, yeah. you know, like a long time ago when, you know, you were starting to get into it. And yeah, yeah. I just started following people like everybody else. And, you know, that's how I found MIC. I researched all these people. So I'm like big into that. So I looked yeah. into a lot of these traders, tried to look up stuff on them, everything I could. Yeah. And I found, you know, MIC and Alex's story and bow and I researched it and I said you know what I'm gonna try this I, I hadn't been in any other service and I said, oh cool oh, this, looks, oh. this looks legit and I like the way these guys talk so I joined you know I was like I'm gonna, yeah. gonna try so were you having I, any sort of success before that like were you have were you making any money or was it kind of just like nah. basically break even or small losses hey, it was just small losses I wasn't making yeah. any money you know, because I, I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was looking yep. at, you know, and, and for me, I'm a slow learner. So I have to look at stuff a lot. Many times I just have to try it. So I'm one of those yep. types. I'm not a data person. I, I don't like tracking data. Like people, yep. you know, some of the people ask me, hey, what yep. do you use to track this? Well, I'm, that's not <laughs> me, you know. I don't do any of that shit. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. And, and at like this point, I spent thousands of hours sitting in front of the screen now, especially in the last two years, and that has tremendously changed my trading and helped me, mm. um, you know, and that's just kind of, it's, it's almost hard for me to explain. Uh, Harry probably understands it, because yeah, like I sure. say, and you do too, James. I'm not a data person, but yep. now I've seen it enough where I can look at stuff when I'm in a trade, you know, on a chart, on level two, whatever. I can kind of see what's going on, and I do research stuff a lot too, so... Like yeah. when I put out my, my watch list, you know, I've already looked at these things most of the time, read about them, looked at the filings, whatever. I mean, yeah, they don't matter a lot of times for small caps, especially, but just gives me a better idea for my own, you know, personal yeah. choice of what I want yeah. to take and how I want to trade it. And that's, that's cool. kind of how I got, how I got into it. And, and actually I started out in, in with MIC, I started shorting, you know, that's how I got <laughs> yeah. over PDP. Yeah. Oh, really? No shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I started shorting and I did that for like 2020 and that got me over PDT. But damn, dude, I got over <laughs> that's PDT, pretty sick. Yeah. When I got over PDT, I got to the point where I was like stagnated and flat. Yep. And I was always nervous shorting. Like I, yeah. I just wasn't yep. super comfortable. Yes, I can trade the setups and, you know, I have my risk. I've always been very good with cutting my losses, taking the loss. I've never taken any huge losses because, man, that, that's a rule I live by. Set your stop, you know, you know, and, and it's just something that – and I have my I, – I always – as soon as I ever heard about max daily loss, I, I've got that with my brokers, you know. I'm like, I set that immediately, you know, as, as, when I found out about it. 
you know, just to protect myself, you know. Yeah. Like, well, you know, it's funny. So, so how long have you, when did you join MIC? Was it 2020 or 2019? No, I think it was uh, beginning of 2019. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's yeah, funny yeah. though, right? Like we always talk about how new traders could be so much more successful if they just did the, the basic things like max daily loss, hard yeah. stops with your set risk, all that. And it's, you're a good example of like, you clearly just did that and look at how quickly you kind of started to grow. Yeah, I mean, it, it will save your account and, and save you a lot of time because that one loss, you know, is going to wipe out whatever months, a year, if you if you let it go. And yeah, dude. me, yeah. It, you know, mentally, if you can't handle cutting it, like I, I can handle it. Like I know when I'm wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm out. If I lose, yeah, it's what it is, you know. And That's a talent, dude. So yeah. uh, I just, I'm just like kind of just have a couple questions here. Yeah. So you join... MIC yeah. and you know obviously you you had some success shorting yeah and then at some point you transitioned to longing yeah. and um like when you started to get into longing uh what types of stuff did you kind of look at what types of like setups did you play because I know there's going to be a lot of long people listening to this who are yeah. probably struggling and saying you know because you have a very kind of solid niche now where yeah. it's like it's not really the same as Austin and it's not really the same as me where you kind of have the ability you're trading like afternoon a bit more you're yeah. trading some of these stocks that are like some stocks that aren't even on my radar yeah so maybe if you could just kind of like talk about like your process with longing and then kind of maybe go into how you got into like what you're doing now because like you're on fire now with like these like SPAC mergers and fucking yeah. you know all that <laughs> shit well, shit it, I never even knew about. Like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool setup. I, I just uh, well, with that, I, I I have found this other guy, you know, and I don't mention too much stuff, you know, because I know it's MIC. This other guy, this swing trader, on Twitter, you know, a, a while back, yeah, I started cool. following him. Is it I like the Maggie back. guy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can mention him. Okay. Well, Qu I started. Quell Qu 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 Maggie. Is that who it is? Yeah. 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 yeah Quell Maggie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like I started following his swing trades. And looking at his daily charts, right, like on his long setups, and I'm like, I was like, man, I, you know, and I know, you know, these things can be, you know, converted into day trades as well, especially these first green days or what he called these mean reversion trades. Yep. So, you know, when you get these parabolics, low float parabolics, whatever, you know, you know, there's going to be a first green day. Yeah. So. Yep. One of the things that I do, like I say, is that, that helped me longing is I just wait. I let that thing go, let everybody chase it, short it, whatever they want to do. The first red day, and that thing will come down, you know, four, five, six days, and I just have it on my list, and I'm watching. Every day I look at it, you know, and every afternoon I'll look at it. You know, and part of my process for longing, every afternoon I scan, you know, Finviz. Yep. Takes a few minutes because I have what I'm looking for. You know, I'll, I'll scan, you know, TOS, you know, just for the percent gainers. I just look, I look at the daily charts. That's how I find most of the stuff that I like trading, the daily chart, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when I'm seeing like these parabolics and then they come back and they start basing for a few days, you know, normally a lot of times you'll see, they'll throw out another PR, you know, or at a base, you know, and, and I'm just watching it. That's how I, I'll see them. I'm watching it. And I like the low floats. Um, a lot of times they have lower volume. They've got a bigger spread. I understand that. You know, I, I account for that. I'll trade smaller size, but like I was telling somebody today, is that, you know, I took the trade on, uh, I don't remember the one that ran earlier this morning, JSPR. J yeah, yeah, I yep. took a trade on that yeah, one. Yeah, I had to go to work today, but, you know, I knew this was a SPAC. I looked at this thing. Uh, I've seen it before. And yesterday, the day where we had GWH, yeah. same type scenario. And I'm like, okay, you know, pre-market, I had to go to work, but I had an order in, you know, I bought it, I got it at right around 10. I had another <laughs> order at eight, okay? Jesus. And, and I had a stop. I was like, okay, my plan was my stop. I was going to put it at uh, 7.96. I was willing to scale down to that eight level. Right? Yeah. If you, you trade this thing with 200 shares, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, it went up ten dollars. <laughs> am I willing to lose? And I was trying to tell somebody it, it's only a hundred shares. If if you trade a hundred shares, yeah. whatever the case, but are you willing to lose a hundred, two hundred dollars to make five or six? You know, 
And yeah, on course, slow float runners, I, I like, you know, I just keep it in perspective. I don't let myself get oversized. You know, I'm, I'm watching the spread on these things. I use fantasy orders to get in. You know, you can't chase them. Jesus. And, and you just, when they work, they work great. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and you can see them. Um, if they're lower volume, I went back and watched a bunch of Harry's videos on the level two. Mm-hmm. So I'd go back on TOS on demand and I'd watch these key levels and these key spots. And you can see these people buying these things in certain areas, right? On these lower floats, it doesn't take much. Look at the volume. It'll take 10,000 share buying this thing will move a dollar, you know, on some of them if nobody's watching them or shorting them. So mm-hmm. some of the lower volumes, I, I don't, I don't advise it for, I'd say, a new, the new trader to do it, but I look for them specifically, you know, and that's kind of how I plan some of these things. But, but I um, like what you're doing, dude. I like how you're like, you're kind of like an old fashioned trader in the way that you're like scanning through like Finviz, like scan daily charts. Like, yeah. like I, I remember when I first got into trading, which was like 20, like, 2018 or whatever like that's what everybody did at the time people would be like scanning and like going through and like picking the next plays and like i don't do that but like i love seeing that and i think it's cool that you took like the mic process of like risk and like how you approach that and kind of put it into your own style of trading like you're not oversizing you're adhering to your risk and like that's really impressive for someone who hasn't really been trading that long well in the in like Harry asked me, you know, when I started switching back to long, so I try, a lot of times I'll look at like the, if you want to call it the macro view of things. So 2020 was a amazing long year, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. And, and yep. when COVID happened, right? You saw all these yep. long traders just great. It was a massive year for them, you know? Yep. And I was shorting the whole time, or a lot of it, and I'm like, damn it, I'm on the wrong side of this thing for me, you know? And I'm going to keep looking yep. at it. So I, I yep. started studying it more, you know? Because, I mean, really, once I got over PT, PDT, like I say, I kind of flatlined. Yeah. And I was scared to move my size up. And I'm like, I don't know why, but just for me, yeah. it just didn't feel right. So it I, happens, dude. I, said, you know, I, need to, I need to switch. I even went to the point where <laughs> I, I changed my accounts back. I don't have a margin account anymore. I took it away. So I, <laughs> I don't even have the ability to short. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like you know, that. I went to that extent. I said, I'm going to just get rid of that. And, and so, I, you know, I don't want to screw around a revenge trade, try to sort something when I shouldn't be. So I just got rid of that, you know, yeah. and, and went to that extent and just really started focusing on it, you know, and looking for certain things like, you know, with, with the whole, the SPAC merger thing, it was just a sector that I picked up on. I saw it last year and i knew they had a certain amount of time to merge you know and as you see recently you see all these mergers coming up because they've got so many you know like 12 to 18 months to create this merger or they risk getting delisted yeah. right so you see them all happening now because spacs were only here what two years ago 18 months ago yeah. it's a new yeah. thing yeah. So that's why they're kind of going doing what they're doing and a lot of them have gotten crushed, you know, they have. If you look at the, they, all the charts, a lot of them look the same. You know, they get, they, they'll run them up, they get crushed, you know, even, and most of them, like a lot of these ones that I find, like um, today that, that S, or that, I don't remember what, JS, JSPR, that people don't know it, but it had a nano float because so many people redeemed their shares at like $10 a share. They had less than a million shares out there. That's and why I traded have, the way it did. Right. And they have a certain amount of time before the pipe investors can start selling their stuff. So yeah. there's like a few week period where these things, if, if, if the initial investors or the people that held the SPAC shares, you know, redeem it at that price, at that $10 price, then that just makes that float that much, that tiny. Right. Yeah. And when it's that small, it takes nothing to, to shoot that thing to the moon. And I just realized that and was like, man, these, a lot of these things are like, can just go nuts. On it's a, really cool. uh, on a uh, particular ticker, like, um, let's say, uh, what would be something that you would like, like other than the first kind of green day setup, uh, what types of like kind of intraday charts do you look for? And also on, uh, on those type of like afternoon trades, uh, what types of like intraday patterns are you kind of looking for i'm just curious so the if I, I don't do well on day one 
hot chicks. I, I just I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Not not in the not in the morning. Like I don't I just don't do well because we're like crowded. It's just hard for me to judge those things. I, yeah. I don't know what it is about it. Um, they are really, difficult. They are. They they are because there's so many people in them and you know manipulators. Whatever whatever. So to me, the most important thing when I'm looking at the hot chicks, I always look at them and I might trade them, but I'm looking at like what I call the stats of it. You know, yeah. what's the catalyst? What's the flow? <laughs> what's the volume? You know, it's, it's stuff you need to look at. Yeah. You know, what areas are, are you know, is it holding that kind of thing? Um, I don't, I really try not to trade the open and wait until 10, 10 30. Yeah. You know, see where it's That'll holding, if it's holding, right? If the volume's holding up, you know, um, you know, do I feel like shorts are trapped? Is it easy to borrow? That kind of thing. And I will take a trade on that. And I'm like, you, I'm, I'm trying to sell. I'll sell part at BWAP, sell the rest or another part of it at high day if it gets there, Yep. you know, and, and move my stop up as it goes. Um, that's probably the best thing, zombie time for me, you know. Um, I really, I'm really looking when, when the open happens, I'm really looking for like setups, you know, like that. Um, but day one hot chicks are not my favorite that, you know, Lately, I've been trading them the last couple of weeks because there hasn't been like many multi-day runners that I can watch. Yeah, you know, I like multi-day runners a lot of times. You know, third, fourth day, I'm not gonna hold them, but I will day trade them, especially if they're holding a certain level on that daily chart. You know, if I see a multi-day, if we get a big day one comes down like Prague the other day, I think it was Prague, or there was one last week. Me and Austin talked about in the webinar. I saw it the first day, came down and held this 360 level. I said, you know what? I said, I, I told him, I said, I think this thing has got more in it. And it spiked on Wednesday. It held the level Thursday and Friday, you know, from 360, it went all the way to five. Yeah. And, you know, those kind of things I look for, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's cool that you know, like, because I feel like long traders, like everyone thinks they have to trade the open. Like, I feel like all longs get so excited, like, for that rush of volume at the open. And that's where you see a lot of like amateur longs, like, like yeah. take losses where like Harry obviously is like seasoned and knows to wait for his spots and all that. But like, how did you get so disciplined? Like, I, like I think it's pretty rare for new traders to be as disciplined as you are when it comes to like all everything we're talking about, like knowing your setup, like waiting for your specific times. Like how did you get to that point? And like, what made you like this, I guess? Um, well, I mean, I'm like everybody else I've gotten in, fights with stocks over the years and lost, you know, <laughs> I told somebody that earlier, I was like, Hey man, I trust me. We've all been through it. You know, uh, I just know like in the past, you know, I've got, I've gotten in something and I've gotten too biased or, you know, and I'll fight the damn thing all day and lose, yeah. you know, I might not take a big loss, but a bunch of little paper cuts all through the day. Yep. And like, dang it, you know, and, uh, and I know I'm doing it. You know, it's just the fact that I have to stop myself. So yep. I, I've had enough years and you take enough losses where finally you're just like, you know what, man, I, I got to get, I got to get a hold of myself, you know? Yep. And I'm like, I know I can do this. I mean, God dang it. I, you know, the military had definitely taught me discipline. Yep. You know, I mean, I'm freaking 30 something years old at this yep. time. I went back to college. I did that on my own every night, sat here till, you know, 11 o'clock at night worked a full-time job with three kids and yeah. you know Damn. did all that oh, awesome. you know yeah, yeah, awesome. so just that's just like for me trading i'm like i'm going to get this i love doing it yeah. but i'm going to be successful no matter how long it takes and i don't care if i make 20 dollars a day until i learn how to do it you know what i mean i'm just gonna keep hacking away I, i'm just one of those people i don't quit man you can you can freaking be me and and yeah. You're gonna have to kill me. That's the only way I'm gonna quit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, Dude, every new yes. trader needs to like listen to this twice. Seriously, I think this is one of like the best like like episodes for newer guys, like especially trying yeah. to get into longing. Like Harry, how many questions do you get that it's like if new traders could just follow this? Like, I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> I well, I know, and a lot of I and like I like how you just kind of said to yourself like. I am someone who trades the open, but I'm very selective about it. And it's really come after like, I guess like a number of years of like me just refining and refining and refining. And like, I respect that you just said like, okay, this isn't really working for me. 
and it doesn't work for some people and everyone's different. Right. And I respect that you're just like, you know what, this isn't really working that well for me. And a lot of the opens like the past six months have been really heavy anyway. So, you know, you just said to yourself, it's not working for me. You know, you found something that kind of worked. You found like a little kind of like uh, niche for yourself. And, uh, you know, it's been interesting for me to watch where you've like said some random stock and I'm like, shit, I have never even heard of that. And then (laughs) in the afternoon, I'm like, shit, that bastard said it was going to rip and it ripped, you know? (laughs) Hey, do you guys, can you give me one second so I can take my dogs out and let my wife Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'll ask Harry a question. Yeah, we can talk. Harry, how long did it take you before when to to know? Because like something I admire about you, actually, I like is like you kind of know like early on. You're like, oh, I'm not gonna be trading until zombie times. Like I'm gonna come back at zombie times, or I'm gonna. I'm, I'm like, how how long did it take you to kind of know that about yourself and like figure that shit out? Um, I think it's that if you have a a a pre market. Well, I just do it based on like day-to-day market. So like Mm -hmm. yesterday we had a ton of things running and everyone all, I knew that like longs today, we're going to have major long FOMO. So I knew Mm -hmm. that we might get that one runner, but if things start to stuff, it can turn really bad for longs. Um, You know, also I'll grade it by the setups, right? If we have a ton of broken charts that are just disgusting, I probably don't want to long those at the open, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, if we've had a main, main runner in pre-market, I know that every single long who missed that is going to want to probably jump in right away. Like a lot of people don't have really good self-control. So like they see something pop a little bit and they're like, bye, 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 bye. And then they end up getting (laughs) fucked and stuffed on later. So it's really just been about like, which side do I think is FOMO? And then I judge it by the kind of setups. And then sometimes I just say, okay, we have had one runner overextended hot chick that you know, maybe you could get a trade on, but probably not. Like it's probably not going to, you know, do what you want. So I'll probably write that overextended stock off. The other broken ones I'll write off too. And I'll just be like, you know what? I can wait till zombie. I can wait until I'm kind of, uh, I guess in this, I I can wait till I can, you know, put myself in a situation where I should be trading. And that's one thing that I've been working on the most is just knowing when to trade, being extremely selective. Bao and I, the past like four days have been just like bitching about range and saying like, when the top is set, you shouldn't be looking to go long. You should just write it off and look for a new chart or a new setup or not touch it. And that's something that, you know, Bao and I have definitely been preaching daily. Interesting. So I have a question for both of you guys, actually. So I get a lot of DMs. I don't know why long traders DM me all the time, but I always just send them to you, Harry. You send them but, over to me. <laughs> I send them to you. I, but most of the people I get, they get into this habit. And I've mentioned this in the past. I think being a long trader is very hard because I think there's a lot of emotions involved too. I think it's harder than short selling in, in my opinion. But why, why is it that new traders are like stuck longing broken charts? And like, how do you guys, what's some advice that you guys have for long bias guys to kind of break that habit of like longing the wrong stocks? I mean, for me, uh, I, I try to go in with a plan on, on something I'm going to trade. Like, if I'm looking at it, you know, if, if it's the hot chick, I'm I'm researching it, looking at it, you know, kind of figuring out what I want to do. But if it's something that I'm already in or trading that day, I've already got, you know, I've already got my plan and, and what I'm going to do. If it doesn't work, it, it stops me out. I'm okay with that, you know, because, like, you know, I always tell myself the only thing you can't control is how much you're going to lose. So, for me mentally that's okay you know and you know if you for for as a long i think one of the biggest things that i've learned is for for my trading is the entry is key and having your targeted exits like you got to take some profit you know like if you take and and i get that question a lot like well you know you hang on to it a lot longer i don't scalp it well yes i do because I have a size that I'm comfortable with and I'm okay with holding it a little bit longer, but I do take profit on the way out, you know, that, that has helped me tremendously, but, but picking the right stock is because I'm not just jumping in it. Like I've looked at it before, you know, and, and if it is the hot chick, it's pretty easy through the process to, to look it up and come up with a pretty good plan, you know, and if you're trading a hot chick, I mean, it's a, it's a technical plan, right? I mean, you're not yep. going to get deep into it. 
So use the chart and use the lines. I mean, that's just it. I mean, yep. and that's what's going to keep you safe and, you know, potentially a good trade for me. Yeah. But Harry, think, what about you? Um, uh, yeah, with me, with the broken stock thing, the thing is, is that, and this is the thing that I've noticed quite a bit, is that every single newer short trader or even intermediate short traders are looking to nail the hot chick for whatever reason. Everyone's trying to get that top tick, right? It, you can post it on Twitter later, can boost the ego later. You have a bunch of people just writing the fire emoji in the chat. <laughs> Everyone's getting like almost like a negative reinforcement from that. And so, um, you know, that puts it, you know, in a situation where a lot of short traders like put themselves at risk to get trapped. Now, if you look at long traders, it's the reverse opposite where if you nail the bottom on a broken stock or you get in on a broken stock, we always see those broken stocks that once in a while will teleport. It's maybe like one in a hundred, but we always see them once in a while. And that's probably in the back of uh, every single long trader's mind who's looking to long those, right? And so it's kind of the reverse. Short traders are looking to get the hot chick. Long traders are looking for that broken stock, hoping it can get that like second or third push higher. And that's where I think that happens. And it should just be completely reversed. Short traders who are looking to make money should be taking advantage of that pop where everyone has already been bagged from pre-market, bagged from the open, looking to sell into that kind of VWAP or resistance push, right? Short traders should be taking advantage of that. And long traders on certain hot checks, not every single hot check, I'm not a big proponent of longing something that has gone from $4 to $12 and is now currently sitting way the fuck over VWAP. I'm not a big proponent of that. I'm not a big advocate of that. I think in that type of situation, it's good to just sit out on a hot chick like that. But if you have something that's kind of around VWAP at the open, we dip down and then, you know, we get that kind of rip higher over high day. That's a type of hot chick that you want to be involved in. That's not something that you want to be short on, right? And I don't think you want to be short on the other one if you're short either. You should just wait till longs are bagged and then just take advantage of that excess supply when it's flooded and it goes lower. And that's what you should kind of be looking at. And I just think that long traders want to be the hero. Short traders want to be the hero. And when you long a broken stock and it goes up as a long trader, you're a hero. And if you short a, uh, you know, a hot chick and you, you make money, you're a hero as a short trader. So it's all about being the hero. It's not about making money. And it's all just about getting your ego stroke, whether it's in the main chat or whether it's on Twitter or whatever. People love that more than making money. And if you can say, I love making money more than that, you definitely have a shot at trading. And like that. Yeah. And something too for, you know, on that is, you know, a broken stock to me, it might be a different definition for somebody else. Because when I have a plan on one, I'm usually basing it off of the daily chart. So I've been looking at it for days. You know what I mean? Intraday, yes, I see a lot of times that, that stocks are broken. And there's, you know, levels that you don't want to be on or a death line. But, you know, if something has been holding for three or four days and I'm watching it, to me, it's not broken yet. So I'm looking for another move. And that's just something I have to explain, you know, sometimes because I don't always base my trade off of that intraday chart, you know, because sometimes I will swing these things. You know, if I see it holding a level, I will swing some you know for a few days mm -hmm. you know and there's that quality maggie setup that i'm looking for you know and i and i i use that a good bit and it worked very well you know I like that it has to be just right for me to do it you know yeah, like and that. i think i just want to add one more thing on a situation like that where i know the type of chart that you're picturing and it's the one that's broken in the morning and then rips up in the afternoon right yeah that type of I mean, situation where we'll, we'll either get that afternoon kind of rip after like two, three o'clock where we get that big afternoon rip and everyone who's stuck short at the lower levels is forced to cover yeah. and we go over high a day, which is a situation that can happen on a lot of broken stocks. And I think that that should be pointed out as well because once in a while, and it's usually a stock that you're tracking, we do get those broken stock moves 
yeah. in the afternoon or in after hours, right? When they're moving the stock and it's a liquid and now everyone who's short is fucked. It, but again, it's going to be time-based trading, right? Like you're not looking right. to go long a broken stock at 10.30 no. a.m., right? No, no, no. And so, I, and so I know the exact charts that you're talking about. And that's just yeah. why I wanted to point that out because they're going to yeah. be like, Chris Lee said, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't has- get that. Yeah, and that's why I say I, I I use a lot of larger time frame levels. Yeah, for for me, you know, yeah. and, and what I'm looking at. So Harry's exactly right. Do not long a broken <laughs> intraday chart. Oh, you know, the DMs you know, I'm gonna get from this. Yeah, you, you yeah. know you know when it's when it's dead during the day. You know what I mean? You can look at it. The volume goes away. It's just not gonna do it. You know what I mean? And, the, so, the moral of the story is know your setup. You know yeah, exactly. Setup, you know what you're looking I mean, for. I, I know what I'm looking for on the yeah. on the chart, the daily yeah. chart. And it's hard. And just like Harry, you know, no one trades exactly the same. And that's what yeah. I try to tell everybody. Yeah. It took me a long time to figure that out. You yeah. Know, I, I, I've, I like I've tried all these setups. Yeah. And, and they work. And I have no doubt. But for me and my personality, I've just adapted a lot of different things that I've learned from all of you guys and the rules. And just kind of made my own thing and it and it worked. So that's just just what I did. And, that's great, man. And, and I can explain it as much as I want to a member, but until they figure out what they're comfortable with and what they do and, yeah. and what works. 100%. I like that. I mean, so we are coming up kind of on our like our time limit, but I guess kind of the last question I wanted to ask, because I, I think you're you're someone good for this, is what what piece of advice would you give to any new trader kind of struggling to find their their niche or like how they trade or what would you what kind of advice would you give them on going forward well i've tried i've tried it all yeah every different little thing you know with small size i mean i just in practice i still practice every day you know like today you know i had some trades that i traded and a lot of times what has helped me and you know if if i see a setup that i want to learn and I use like five shares and I'll just yep. use five shares until I figure it out, you know, or to see if it works or if I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know? And, and that, that's probably the, been the biggest thing for me to help control my emotions because everybody, everybody has them. That's your biggest enemy is your own emotions. You know, yeah. the trade, the trade is there and you can take it, but you just have to control yourself, Yeah, you know, and, and implement the rules. That's, that's the hardest part. Like everybody says, and, you know, um, for newer traders, I would just like to say, try it all. I mean, if you're a data person, use the data. I mean, if you're not, spend a lot of screen time, try stuff out like I did. You know, it takes longer. I mean, it's taken me a long time. I mean, but you just got to be willing to put in the time and the, and the practice. You know? Yep, I agree. And, Perfect. And, you know, you get, you, uh, over time, you'll see it. You'll, you'll finally start seeing it. And it just... Yep. 100%. You know, it kind of clicks, clicks with you, you know, what works for Perfect. you. I like that, man. I think that's a good note to end on. Honestly, that was, that was really good. So Chris, man, th- thank you for coming on. We, I've, yeah. we've had a lot of requests to get you on here, so we'll definitely <laughs> have to get you back in the future and monitor your progress and see where you're at. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, thanks to MIC for everything you guys do. And, you know, anybody in there, like I say, you're in the best place in the world to learn because you're not going to find any other community like this. I promise you that. Amen, brother. Thank you again. Love it. Thank you, guys. Sweet.